Now, Alexander Palace is one of the capital's most recognisable landmarks. Over the last 130 years, it's been used for banquets, boxing and Miss World competitions. But now, it has a new use. Carthy can tell us more. Well, there's been an ice rink here since 1990, but it's never been used as a top flight uh, for, for a top flight professional ice hockey team for their home matches. And that's what's happening now. But Alexander Palace over the years has become one of the top venues in London for all sorts of occasions. It's a really beautiful yeah. setting, amazing surroundings, excellent architecture and uh, many years of history. It was actually built uh, in 1873 and in 1936, the first uh, public television transmissions, which were from the BBC, were actually uh, came from this building. Uh, in the 130 years history that uh, you've actually had here, it's been used for all sorts of things, boxing venues. And you may remember that the Miss World competition last year was brought here from Nigeria. So it was brought to the capital and that all took place at Alexandra Palace as well. So lots of different events that have taken place here, but now it's got another use, and that is that it's going to be used for the London Racers for their home venue. And the man that's brought them here is uh, Roger Black. Roger, there's a new setup this year for British ice hockey. It's uh, the Elite League. Can you just explain briefly what that is? Well, the Elite League brings together uh, five clubs from, uh, from the former Super League, together with clubs from the British National League, and also a new entrant to ice hockey this year, the London Racers. The Racers, as a name in ice hockey, has a long tradition dating back to 1936, but the club has been dormant for uh, quite a few decades now, and we thought that this was an excellent opportunity to bring hockey back to, uh, to London. Now, some of the guys behind the juniors, the London racers are out there as well, just get preparing for their match later on. But is this the usual setter where there are just lots of overseas players and no local players here? Oh, no, we've got uh, six British players in our team, and we're working right now, as you can see on the ice, on the, on the future racer uh, lineup. And uh, in order to get the kids motivated to, uh, to uh, improve their skills and so forth, we felt it was important here at Alexandra Palace to have a top flight team. It's the magnet that draws the, uh, the kids to the top of the game. OK, and you're hoping for your first victory tonight, so good luck against Coventry. I'm desperate for a skate, so I'm going to uh, try and get out there before the match actually starts. Back to you, Mark. Finally, ice hockey may be huge in North America, parts of Eastern Europe and Scandinavia, but in England, where football is king, it's a sport few people play and even fewer people care about. So when we heard that a new team has been launched in the capital city, London, we just had to send Patrick Snell to investigate. It may not be the biggest sport in the country, but ice hockey in England lacks none of the passion and commitment of the bigger leagues. Its band of followers may be small in number, but they certainly love their hockey, not least here at the home of the newly formed London Racers. We're building a fan base. There has been hockey in London before, in the guise of the London Knights, but they folded at the end of last season. So I think we've done a pretty good job, actually, of, uh, of, of recruiting a number of their fans. But if you lose a team that you've dedicated time to, then there's, there's a transfer period, perhaps, of, of allegiance. We're getting gates now, perhaps not as big as we'd like, but we're, we're gradually getting uh, an increased uh, attendance. <laughs> Well, not exactly. The racers haven't won any of their 37 fixtures so far this season. Just as well, then, that there's no relegation at the end of it. Well, let's put it this way. That it's, been, um, it's been tough, but um, the guys are great, management is great, and we're getting a lot of support from our fans that we've got. And hopefully, I mean, the fan base is growing, so we're getting more and more support from them. We haven't won yet, so that's kind of, it's kind of hard. And we practiced like you saw today. We had 13 guys, and that's been like that most of the year. So it's kind of it's kind of hard. It's, it's a little mental not having winning a game yet, but sticking in there. If your team is uh, down a couple goals or whatever, and the other team has all the momentum, you know, if they're pressuring your zone the whole game or whatever, and uh, or if there's a guy taking liberties on your team, you know, you might want to stand up to him and you know try to win that fight and give the rest of the guys in your team confidence. Ah, yes, the fighting. No game of ice hockey would be complete without the obligatory bit of scrapping. And the racers didn't disappoint in their last home outing against the Manchester Phoenix. So the British League at least has some things in common with the NHL, particularly with the racers able to attract talent from abroad. Well, I've always wanted to play in Europe and see it and, you know, experience this. So uh, the opportunity presented itself and we just thought it was the best chance for us to take it. I've mainly, well, I've played only in North America, mainly in the U.S. Uh, the last five years. 
the game's a little bit different. It's not uh, not nearly as physical, uh, but the skill level is very good. So it's it's a different game. You know, it takes some adjustment. You know, from uh, from a player's standpoint. The racers certainly have no problems in attracting international talent from countries such as the home of Hockey Canada. But what's vital to the club's future existence is packing out relatively small arenas like this one with attendances of around five or six hundred people. People are not funding it enough and um, in order for guys to grow up in the league. I mean, in 36, I mean, England was the first country to win the World Championships, Europeans and the Olympics. So, in the long term, the London racers are hopeful they can become competitive with other sports in the capital. But in the short term, they have to get competitive on the ice and win that ever so elusive first game. In London, I'm Patrick Snell. Thanks, Patrick.